Hey everybody, uh, so this video is intended to um, be shown after your quiz on the trigonometric functions table that we studied last week. Alright, so what I've done in this video is I've just made a little bit of a breakdown of the exam, of the things that you're going to see. We're going to talk just briefly about all of these things um, and tomorrow in tomorrow's lesson, we'll start actually reviewing these concepts. So we're going to spend uh, Wednesday and Thursday reviewing linear functions, quadratics, and maybe uh, we'll spend less time reviewing trigonometry because we've just done it and you have access to all the full lessons. But um, we'll definitely review linear functions because it's been a long time. We'll review quadratics. There probably won't be anything on the geometry stuff that we did at the very beginning. Um, I think I'm not going to bother with it just because these things take so much time you know, to graph and to figure out the equations and all of that stuff that I'm going to drop the geometry stuff that we did at the very, very beginning. That was uh, far more basic and you guys all got the hang of it and I don't feel it necessary to test you on it again. So uh, your exam is going to be broken down into three main chunks. The first one is linear functions, the second is quadratic functions, and the third is trigonometry. Now, because this is going to be a two-day exam and, uh, you, you know, there's going to be different types of questions on it, I might not have, you know, like section A trigonometry, section B linear functions, but what I might have is section A multiple choice, and there'll be a little bit on linear functions, a little bit on quadratics and a little bit on trigonometry. All right, um, I might have a section just for graphing, and it could be graph of this line and graph this quadratic function. Now, trigonometry, because it's so different from the other two things, we didn't graph very much, aside from like the unit circle. Um, the unit, I'm not gonna ask you to graph the unit circle. I might show you a picture of the unit circle and have you tell me something about it, but, uh, but even that, you know, it's not, it's not the most important thing, uh, and you have studied the trig table. So if I put the unit circle on there, it would probably just be to assist you with this. I probably will not change what I've just said. There will be no unit circle on the exam. Uh, so we're going to go through each section, and we're going to look at what's going to be on it, what's not going to be on it. Uh, and then I just have a couple of things to add at the end. So the first thing, linear functions. You are going to be asked to graph a line given the equation of a line. So you'll have a blank graph there. I haven't made the test paper yet, so I don't know if you're going to have uh, the axes already labeled for you. If not, it is your responsibility to either draw the axes if they're not there, or if they're there but they're not labeled, it's your job to write in a little x on the positive x-axis and a little y on the positive y-axis. You don't need to write negative x, positive x, negative y, positive y. You just need to have a positive x over there and a positive y over there. That's all I need. And if there are no numbers, please put numbers. We've talked about this before because if you don't put numbers, then I don't know. Are you graphing you know, going over 1, up 1, or are you going over 10, up 20, or what? You know, I, I need to know those things before you draw your picture. Uh, a couple of comments for any graphing questions. When you've drawn the dots, please try and make your line connect to those dots, because for some of the tests, the dots were drawn perfectly, and then the line just kind of, you like lost interest halfway, and your line was just going off somewhere. Um, Maybe not tests, but like, you know, little homework questions and stuff. If you take the, the the whole point of drawing the dots for your lines or your parabolas or whatever, the whole point of drawing the dots is that your line, your curve, looks more accurate at the end. There's no point carefully, you know, with a ruler putting a dot and then a few centimeters over another dot and another dot and then just freehanding the whole line and getting some squiggle that misses all of those dots. That's not the point of the dots. All right, so that's, uh, that applies to linear functions and quadratics, all right? Now, with linear functions, the entire focus, pretty much, will be on uh, graphing. So you're going to, uh, well, on something related to a graph. So I'm going to either give you an equation and ask you to graph the function, or I'm going to give you the graph and ask you 
to tell me what the equation is. So we'll review this in more detail, but remember that just means you need to find the slope and the y-intercept and then uh, write it out in, in the form of y equals mx plus b. So that's linear functions. There might be a, you know, a couple of questions here and there that what letter do we use to represent the slope? M, N, O, or P, things like that. So if I put a multiple choice question, that'll be the type of question. There'll be no calculation question uh, in the multiple choice. Like, um, you know, university exams would have like four graphs and say, which graph best describes this equation? That kind of thing. I'm not gonna give you anything like that. I'm gonna give you more things like, you know, which of these is the correct, uh, you know, vertex form and I'll put you I'll give you standard form and vertex form and the equation of a line and you've got to tell me which one so that it'll be that kind of thing for multiple choice or maybe true and false things like that and then you'll have some calculation questions so linear functions you have to graph a line given an equation or find the equation given a graph okay so that's the first section of your exam. This is all that there will be to it, these three sections. So the second section is quadratic functions. We spent a lot of time on quadratics, so I'm not gonna ask a ton of stuff. It'll be a few things of finding the vertex when you're given vertex form that I've written out the, you know, the x minus h squared plus k, and there might be an a value in the front. Uh, and you just gotta tell me what the vertex of, uh, of such a parabola would be. For like four, five, six of those, something like that. Um, there won't be too much in the way of the factoring and the graphing, but there will be a, a decent amount because this isn't a one-day test. If this was going to be a one-day test, then you know I'd have one of these, a couple of these, one of those, and just a sprinkling of trigonometry on the top. But what I'm going to do instead is going to be a two-day thing. You're going to have lots of time. I'm not going to go crazy with how many graphs I put on there because I know it takes time to work through the math. It takes time to, you know, if you don't have the axes, it takes time to draw and label and all of that. I'm going to try and find uh, a template that's uh, that's already labeled for you so you don't have to worry about that or so that you don't have to at least put in the time for that. Um, uh, but yeah, so you'll have to graph either in vertex form or in standard form possibly both, but if I ask you to graph both, one vertex form and one standard form, I'll probably make it so that the graph for your vertex form question comes from one of the things that you had to uh, find the vertex of. So it'll be something that you inadvertently did the first step to, which was finding the vertex, and you can plot that. Similarly, uh, for standard form, I'll make it something like um, you the factoring question will be the same equation. Like on your quadratics test, you had a factoring question, and then the next question was to graph one of the things that you factored. So you will inadvertently do the first step of the graphing problem in the factoring and the finding of the vertex. Okay, so that's most of the quadratics uh, unit. Um, I don't think there's really much to, to add to that. It's finding the vertex, factoring, equations given in standard form and graphing either vertex form or standard form or possibly both. Um, the third section and the final section is trigonometry. We did a lot of stuff, uh, including the unit circle, which isn't on here. Um, the reason it's not on here is I I never really liked it. I mean, I, I like the trig table a lot more in terms of figuring out what's, what's useful and what's not. The, tri the unit circle did help with knowing positives and negatives. So maybe it's worth studying just so that you make sure you get your positive and negative cosine and sine values right. Um, uh, I And I might put in, you know, like a more of a word problem kind of thing for trigonometry. But we, so basically you need to know what the basic functions are. So you need to know what sine of theta is. So like not just the symbol, you need to know what it means. That if you have a right angle triangle, you need to know that sine of that angle is the length of the opposite side divided by the length of the hypotenuse. You need to understand what that ratio is. So you can draw a little picture and label it to remind yourself. Um, you need to know the same for cosine and tangent. And I'm not going to make you, you know, drill it into your heads about 
cosecant, secant, and cotangent, but it's always useful just so that you get more familiar with it. Uh, if you find that it's confusing you, trying to study those three as well as the inverse ones, and that you can't remember, oh, is it opposite over hypotenuse or hypotenuse over opposite, forget the extra three. There's not going to really be anything on the extra three because you never really use those uh, at, at this level. I'm in third year physics and I hardly ever use any of those three inverse functions. They come up a couple of times, but I mean only a couple of times in like three years uh, in university. So don't worry too much about the three extra ones. They are important, but not as important as these first three for the math that we've been doing. All right, so you should know what those basic functions are and how they relate to each other in the context of a triangle. Um, no, oh, specifically a right triangle. You should know the two basic uh, identities that we talked about. So that was like the sine over cosine equals tangent and the uh, sine squared plus cosine squared equals one, that kind of thing. You should know those um, uh, before the exam. I think those were the only two that we did. Some people, if you if you look up some people's lists of trigonometric identities, uh, they'll include things like cosecant theta equals one over sine theta. That You could say that that's an identity. I'm not considering that an identity. I'm saying for the, the identities that we talked about in our identities lesson. So the sine squared plus cos squared equals one and the sine over cosine equals tangent. So I might ask you, uh, starting with sine over cosine and this triangle, prove it, prove that this equals tangent of theta. Now that would probably be the hardest it could get, prove this. Um, so just look over how we got from sine theta over cosine theta equals tangent theta in the context of the triangle. We did everything, everything goes back to triangles um, or the unit circle, but even that had triangles. So yeah, everything goes back to triangles and as it should based on the name trigonometry. Um, but yeah, so you should know those two identities you should, you should also know the trig table, at least the top half, the bottom half if you, if you can, but like I said, you don't really see cosecant, secant, and cotangent very much, so I might just cut that half off, or most of it off, or something. Um, alternatively, I could give you the full table and just fill out most of that bottom half and very, relatively little of the top half, but either either way, Try and study the whole thing, but at least study the top half of that, all right, of the trig table. So the sine line, the cosine line, and the tangent line. Know what they are, or you can memorize all the values if you want, or memorize the sine line, or memorize the thing with the square root of four denominators and figure out the sine line, uh, and figure out how to get the cosine and the tangent lines based on that first line. All of that stuff, uh, you're responsible for knowing that top half of the table. I will fill in a couple of values, but if I'm asking you for 15 things, I'm only gonna put in like three, maybe five if I'm feeling generous that day. Um, I would say, I was gonna say if Dagenham won, but they're not playing anymore, so I can't, I can't do that. Um, but, uh, but yeah, it'll be somewhere between three and five values that I plug in, so you need to figure out the other 10. So you should know the whole thing top to bottom uh, before your exam. And now I, I know with this exam and probably a history exam and the science exams and stuff, you, you're going to have a lot on your plate. So I'm going to try and be a little bit more generous. I'm, I'll chop off the bottom half of the table, things like that. Study the whole thing because it's useful, not because you're being tested on it. It's very, very applicable for all different kinds of math that you might be doing. I use trigonometry all the time in my physics courses. Everything has sine and cosine, especially those two. Sine and cosine come everywhere in the, the work I'm doing. So uh, it's important to know just for life and those particular values I've found have given me such an advantage just in terms of speed in calculating those values over uh, you know other people that, that have never studied such a thing. Now of course I'm not saying that, uh, that they don't know anything about it, they just they either calculate it using a different method or they have a calculator handy and they plug it into that. But it is handy, especially for sine and cosine, to just memorize those values. It'll save you a lot of time uh, if you're working with sine and cosine a lot. And the last couple of things you're going to need to know are sine law and cosine law. All right, so we talked about what the equations are for those. 
uh, and how to use them, uh, I will put a formula sheet. I put a formula sheet for all the harder stuff. So I might, uh, I might like, if I've given you, if I've asked you for a trig identity, I'll say, you know, prove sine theta over cosine theta equals something else. But then on the back page, I'll, I'll write the whole thing so that you know what the something else is. That's not the best example of it. The best example would be something like a sine law question where on your formula sheet, I've written out sine law for you and both forms of cosine law. All right, now obviously I can't give you formulas for the trig table because you're responsible for memorizing that stuff. But for sine law and cosine law, you're not responsible for memorizing the formulas. I'll give you the formula, but you need to know how to use them, all right? That's what you, well, that's the important part. Same thing with here. We did, you know, graphing lines and graphing quadratics one way and graphing quadratics another way. So we did all this different stuff. There's lots of graphing. There's lots of ways that you could get confused and mess things up. So I'll give you the equations for those things. I'll give you a general idea of how factoring works, though it is kind of difficult to, uh, to, to write out without using real numbers, but we'll, I'll figure out a system that sort of helps you along the way. So it's not going to be necessarily the most conventional formula sheet. I'll give you like a half example of how to do the factoring thing, but all with letters, stuff like that. Um, I will be generous with this because I know I'm asking a lot of you. Some of you should be doing material that's about three or four grade levels below this simply because of your age, but all of you are definitely smart enough to, to understand this stuff as evidenced by your tests and the fact that you are still in this math class. So uh, yeah, so those are the main points. You're going to be focusing on linear functions, quadratic functions, and trigonometry on your test. It'll, there'll probably be a little bit of like multiple choice -y kind of stuff or true and false kind of stuff somewhere in there uh, on certain parts of the test. Um, Aside from that, the formula sheet will be provided. It'll probably be attached to the back. Um, and your exam, I don't think I said this yet in this video, but uh, hopefully you guys already know this because I did have a conversation about this a few days ago uh, with one of your fellow teachers. Um, but uh, your exam is going to be on Wednesday. I don't have that much room. Wednesday, May. 22nd and Thursday, May 23rd. All right, so um, I'm just going to make sure I have those dates right today. Yes, yes, okay. Yeah, so your exam will be Wednesday, May 22nd and Thursday, May 23rd. All right, so you we will be doing, after this, we'll just be doing review. It'll be a review of linear functions, a review of quadratics, a bit of a review on trigonometry, um, and these will be your exam days. Um, on top of that, just a couple of last things to mention. One, the trigonometry unit, because, because we haven't had a test on it yet, there's going to be probably a considerable amount more on trigonometry than something like linear functions. Now, lines and quadratics, there'll be enough because there's more graphing and stuff, but uh, trigonometry, there's probably going to be a substantial number of questions. So make sure you study the trigonometry because we haven't had a test on it. Aside from the trig table, there's you haven't been tested on it. So, um, so make sure you focus on your trigonometry, but don't neglect the other two. These two will be big parts of the exam as well. And the last thing, because there's so much to this, I will be offering you guys a live review session on YouTube. All right, so uh, I will be hosting a live stream. I did this last year for the math exam and it worked out reasonably well. One out of the three students came online for said review. But basically I'm thinking uh, one of the following. I'm thinking, so your exam is on the 22nd. So the Saturday before that is the 18th. And the Sunday before your exam is the 19th. So what I'm thinking is I will have a live stream review session. Now it's your choice. I can do probably, I'll need to see which one of these 
uh, is best for me or if any of them just don't work at all for me. But I can do Saturday, May 18th uh, morning, afternoon, or evening. All right, so I can do any option in there. I can do one hour, two hours, whatever you want. Probably not more than two hours, and I don't think you would want more than two hours. Um, um, but basically, morning, afternoon, or evening on Saturday, May 18th. Sunday, same kind of deal, morning, afternoon, or evening. I'll do whatever you want from this. Uh, probably not a bunch of separate review sessions because I've got stuff going on at university here. Um, but I can do at least two of these times. So, you know, if you wanted an hour or an hour and a half on Saturday morning and an hour and a half on Sunday evening, I could do those. All right. So, uh, talk with whichever teacher or teachers are there and can relay this information to me and just let me know what you want, uh, out of these, out of these options. All right. So it can be anywhere between an hour and two hours less than an hour if you want, but I'll, I'll be willing to do an hour to two hours on two of these six occasions. So let me know which ones work out best for you guys. Talk it over as a class and get back to me. And hopefully uh, that review will help you. So here's your breakdown for your exam and your next videos will be actual mathematical review for your exam. See you then.